would say that is the second most played anthem in beach soccer. And you're about to hear the most played anthem because they reach finals all the time. It is, of course, the anthem of Brazil. Finish We're ready for the big start of this beach soccer match. Formality is about to get underway. We'll toss the coin and let me give you a big rundown on the rules here. You need to beach soccer then. Be prepared. It's going to be a wild ride. You expect all nine goals a game. All three kicks are direct and unopposed. It's three thirds, 12 minutes. 36 minutes in total. The blue takes it on the edge of the pitch. There are your sidelines and your goal lines. And expect a lively crowd. Music plays throughout. These Brazilian fans love music, love beach soccer, and love winning. Well, look, going into this game, slightly the favourites, Brazil, but as I mentioned before, Russia are the only team to beat them in the last couple of years. That was on penalties in Dubai, so similar conditions to this, as we would imagine here in Qatar. So it's very difficult to call. For Brazil, their star man in this tournament has been Rodrigo. Ten goals for him. By contrast, Pobiatini is Russia's top scorer with six. Two coaches who have been there, done it, and won World Cups. Gilberto of Brazil, a very calm, very placid coach. For Russia, it's a slightly more, well, how do you say this? Nervous, erratic. Mikhail Likachev, two referees there. Lukas Otrovsky, a bank manager from Poland. Hachem Mansour who is from Madagascar. Apparently had an absolutely epic journey to get here. Planes, trains and automobiles. Well, that isn't Gilberto. It's one of the backroom staff. The lads collecting badges. That isn't Gilberto. Neither's the baby. That's Shaka in the captain and Mao. Mao now 42. Just talking about retiring after the World Cup, which comes up in Paraguay next month. If that happens, it remains to be seen. He's not been at his 100% best here in this tournament. Rafa Badilla, substitute goalkeeper from Braga in Portugal, has played a good number of minutes. In fact, without checking the stats down to the second, he's probably played more than his captain. Russia there, former World Cup winning goalkeeper. Hooks the current incumbent, Mikhail Likachev, the Russian coach, you can see there in the white t-shirt. Very superstitious coach, very nervous coach as well. Watch him whenever the game kicks off, he spends a lot of time crouching down, head and hands. Quite a sight to see and then there is still routines and rituals he goes through with his players before they go on as substitutes. There's plenty of things he does off the sand as well, believe it or not. Certain order people sit on the bus, certain people can and can't sit on the bus. It's very complex. I get time, let's explain a little bit more to you. But right now, we're ready for the action. Shakin and the captain will kick off alongside Makarov. He scored four goals. I'm sure he'd love to add to it. Straight from the kickoff. There's Likachev, and there is that nervous look. Expectant father look, I call it. He carries something in his hand there for look, as you can see. Not exactly sure what the story is behind that. 
Bettini. Early shot ricochets behind. Well, since it was inaugurated the World Championship before FIFA for Beach Soccer, Brazil was just winning it time after time after time. Once it became a FIFA sport, things changed. Other countries took it more seriously. France winning the first FIFA World Cup, and Russia, they've won it twice, twice in a row, in fact. World Cup played every two years in beach soccer. Mao scrambles back and holds on to the ball. Tatarino heads back to Mao. Mao loops it forward to Rafinha. Heads it back. It's easy for Russia to deal with. Novikov back to his goalkeeper. Novikov, and that's a good overhead kick. Nikonov been excellent throughout this tournament. He actually said in an interview before this tournament that Brazil should be scared of Russia. Big words from a big man. As well, Makarov. That's enough. I dearly love to win this Russia. European Beach Soccer League, they finish runners up to Portugal. Check it in. European games pass them by as well. Silverware is required in Russian Beach Soccer. At the other end. Rafinha caused a problem, but couldn't get a finish. As you can imagine, Russian fans outnumbered by the Brazilian fans. There you go, there's your proof. Right on cue. There's still a fair number of Russians here, as you can imagine. All kinds of expats live in Qatar. Makes up around about 80% of the population. Brazil finish skims wide of the post. Mazanov just wipes his gloves, breathes a sigh of relief. Plays the ball out to Shishin. Mazanov. Shishin, a master of sport in Russia. Has his crash. Loses the ball. He wasn't master of the ball there. That's for Brazil. Well. The finish from Rafinha, very un-Brazilian like, just completely missed the ball as it bounced off a divot. Torino. Plays it away. Almost to Brazil, but we're going to take a break for the injury. Romanov hurt himself. See there, stretched with the right foot and he got it stamped on. The old magic spray is out. Well, there's two things you do in beach soccer. Magic spray or water. If it's really bad, you combine the two. That was just a magic spray injury. Hobbled off for a rest. In the meantime, Brazil will take the corner. The car was hovering far post, back it off. Had to head it away. Across the face of goal, the cow. That's an awfully great save. 
Coutinho. Free kick in a very good position with a very good player. Save again for Bazanov. Just gets across his goal so so quickly. It was a similar save I remember many years ago by Casillas of Real Madrid. He thought he can't get across that quickly. Bazanov does similar here on the sand in Qatar. We should be hoping he can match that save right now. Chino can. Now bounces on the ball, emerges from a sand cloud, brings the ball out. Brazil don't advance. Machinho. Oh, well, that's two chances now, you would say. Players of Brazil calibre would have put away. Rafinha first. Did you watch a replay of the free kick? And then that miss. Alcino dragging the ball wide. Is there one or two nerves amongst these Brazilian players? They know that Russia have beaten them a number of times. For Russia don't have confidence. Into Brazil to break. Going off does really well to get across. That's enough. The goalkeeper with the ball likes to play it with his feet. Does so. Sadly, not to a red shirt. Now, Antonio. Now, Mauricino. Crash control, but Mauricino picks it up. Has to go back. Brazil now playing two and two rather than the three and one. Well, as soon as I say that, and then switch to that. Cal. Was the linchpin there, but he couldn't control it. Butini, top scorer for Russia in this tournament. Crash. Butini, he's got a little bit of space. His control took him back towards goal rather than towards the opposition's goal. That's enough. Again, the same thing. Playing very cautiously at the moment, Russia. There's not very often that either of these two teams play six minutes of beach soccer with no goal. It's not very often they're playing each other, though, is it? That's enough. Chishin. Oh, dear. Crash to the rescue. Crash again. Chishin arrives. Can he get the shot in? He can. Probably a teenage top scorer. Puts it wide and it looks easier to score. Marcinho. Scores himself. Kicking, which he takes like a corner, goes short. Holds his soul over the ball, which is a difficult skill to do in the sand. Oh, look at that! Well. Good save by Mao. And what happened at the other end there? Balancing the ball on his head, that's in it. As he tried to get through on goal. That's exactly what you expect from a Brazilian player. They're the only nation that would try it, to be fair. There's the cough that came. Chance for Brazil, Cotterino! Well, I tell the goalkeeper slightly at fault there. Cotterino points to the sky, Superman style. Finally, Brazil have their breakthrough. For Russia, that lapse in concentration has cost them. Oh, we see the header there, but it was a little bit before. You can't see. That's the the goalkeeper, and maybe he thought he could have gone with his hands. He didn't, he went with his feet. Ball squirmed out. Cartagena capitalised. Russia nil, Brazil won.
Sean Jim will kick off. Makarov. Wasn't far away, was it? Now, the goal scorer to Rodrigo. And there is the goal for Rodrigo. Well, for him, the goals have been flowing in this tournament. That's number 11 now. And more importantly for Brazil, it's breathing space in his first period. Lovely turn, has pushed the ball into space. Second touch, takes him sideways. Third touch is the shot. Takes the bounce in front of the goalkeeper, which takes it into the back of the net. Look at disgust on Shakarin's face. Happy faces behind him, though. Pushing Il Brazil too. Well, in this tournament, Brazil now scored 32 goals. 21. He's conceding goals. But neither of them be particularly leaky. The biggest scare was for Brazil. Conceded five against the UAE. Scored seven. And the average goals in the beach soccer match is nine. Width of gap is not there. Has to go back to his goalkeeper. Smart move. Build again. Tanzania. Torino. Ball looked like it was out of play there. Zatowski to go. The referee says yes. So it's a throw to Brazil. Brazilian keeper. Continue. Six goals. They're getting another, another throw from him right now. Nice goes back. Antonino takes no chances with the header away. did appear behind Catarino there, but the ball was not low enough for him to get put off or nick it past foul. Fishing, usual header. Back into the danger area, and it very nearly cost Russia there. Look in here, knows he should have done better. That's enough. That's enough again. Shishin again, can't find the space, Brazil breaking numbers, three against one for a second. Oh, well, he was tackled by the sand, wasn't he? Ball disappeared in a big cloud of dust and he couldn't see where it was and couldn't connect. It's not often you get three against one in beach soccer, he didn't capitalise Brazil. Now tries the shot, it's rather weak. Does not. Just to squash the ball into the sand and flick up quickly and play it. He does that, checking in the captain is on. Cow. So he knows a free kick to Brazil. 
Fabinho. Caught on his right leg. Demoro, the culprit on that occasion. He's got something to prove the Russian. He came out in the press before this tournament said he's very confident of beating Brazil here and in the World Cup. Yeah, big, big words. So far, his team are not living up to them. But inside the final 30 seconds, it appeared. Brazil will be happy with their work so far. Russia, obviously, less so. Three goals so far. Can he make it four? Three goals for the tournament. He can't. There's an off held on really well. Back it off. Stretching to keep that in, he does so. Robikov tries to beat two yellow shirts. He can't do it to beat the Hooter. So, end of the first period. Two goals for Brazil. Catarina with a header. Rodrigo with a turn and shot. It's Brazil are two goals to the good. Got like a chef, the Russian coach, will have plenty to say. He needs to come up with some new ideas here. As we head towards the second period at the end of the first period. It is Russia nil, Brazil two. Gilberto, the Brazilian coach, very fortunate in that he's got experience of the Russian league and their style of play. He was a consultant at Cristal, which is one of the major Russian sides in beach soccer, club sides, that is. So he understands the mentality of the players. He's seen all his opposition players and knows their strengths and weaknesses. And Mikhail Likachev, a bit different. He's the coach of Spartak Moscow when he's not coaching the Russian national side. So he does get to see Brazilian players in the likes of the Club Mundialito that there was earlier on this year in February in Moscow. It was indoors, by the way. So it was minus 15 outside, I was there. So he has an insight into a lot of the players, but apart from that, these two teams rarely cra clash. Maybe once every couple of years, once every World Cup, depending on the draw. And previously, Last year, in the Intercontinental Cup in Dubai, that's when they last met. Russia won on penalties. And Russia have beaten Brazil in Portugal in 2015 in the World Cup there. I'm looking for any kind of clashes between the two sides in any form of football. And the Soviet Union did beat Brazil 2-1 in 1988 in the Olympic final, which is similar to what we've got here, because this is an Olympic event. Will I have any bearing? Of course not. 
breaks a good start. to sit wider, it's not a case of moving further back in the team and you get with 11 aside, it's wider. More time there to play the ball. Central players, they have to be super quick. Well, a few nights ago, Nigel de Jong, a Dutch player, but he's still playing here in Qatar. He came to train with the Brazilian team. It nearly killed him. The fitness levels of these players, especially anaerobically when they're sprinting and jumping in the sand, is, is unbelievable. Looks easy because they're so fit. Believe Just the overhead. They'll be super athletic. Bit of a gymnast. And stamina as well. We love to do because it's slow, slow, then fast. That's enough, not fool. Tanya, back to the goalkeeper. Oh, back to his goalkeeper. Check it in. He's looking for the gap, it's not there. So he goes to Makarov again. Shots wayward. Got a lick of Chef there. He has his lucky bit of rag in his right hand. He always uh, rubs against his face at various points before and during a game. He also likes to make the sign of the cross on the players' backs. Goalkeepers in particular before they play. Is the sight to behold. Now. Forty two year old keeper. Start to both periods. He's been replaced by Rafa Padilla a few times recently, especially in this tournament. I think they are preparing for his retirement. I think he's been saying for the last three or four years, yeah, one more season, just the one, then another one. And so on and so forth. Shot came wide. Not far away though, was it? Russia are playing a pretty high press at the moment. It's a dangerous game because Brazil can break super quickly. Ball quickly enough. They are playing quite deep, Russia. When the ball's played long, they're chasing after it rather than waiting for it, which is ideally what you want to do in beach soccer because obviously there's no offside. So if you wait at the far touch line, you're going to get more success. You're going to play the ball back to an on, on rushing player. Mao. Oh, what a finish that is! Absolutely sensational. Moricino. Goal number four for him in the tournament, first of the night. Little Samba shuffle after finishing, and why not?
There's the touch. No one closes him quickly enough. He just opens his body, turns out, cracks the ball across the goalkeeper. And if you look at page six of the coaching manual, how to volley and beat soccer, you'll see that picture. How to celebrate, you'll see that picture. Look at that. He's got everything. He likes it. That's your nail Brazil three. Look out. Gino. Oh! Again! It's starting to be easy for Brazil. It's the simplest of setups. And the finish executed perfectly. It was just sheer power to beat the goalkeeper. Nice low touch. There's no chance of the opposition heading the ball. And then the overhead kick. Joski in goal. That is a baptism of fire for him. Now with the save. Just as you watch the celebration. A bit more orthodox than one on the knees. Than the previous celebration. Saying it should be a penalty, it should be a free kick. It is in fact a free kick. A little bit wide, but it's in good position. I think he was the one who gave away the free kick. That's the yellow card for his troubles. No for cynicism than anything else. Well, that is the perfect setup, the perfect tee. Look at that. I just don't want to put the ball on it. Sand sculpture. Well, Pettini will be hoping that now stands in a goal like a sand sculpture. Rather than a bad left or right to save this. Now oh, that is a good save, very good save. <laughs> and he shouldn't laugh. Just have to stop that. Grimace is slightly sorry. Saves a good one to his left. Ricochets off his thigh, so he has to clear it. And he does that, he hits his own player. Looks a lot more solid than he has done in previous games in the tournament now. Yeah, Likachev looks a worried man. No surprise why when you look at the scoreline. Puck stops at 6.35 and it is 4 0 to Brazil. Spanish fans for the women's final earlier on. And Spain beat Great Britain. We'll have the medal ceremony after this game. Both the male and female events. Final day of the Enoch World Beach Games. Good off. Catalino forwards. Rather aimlessly though. Off. Rather lost the ball there in the air. Chance now for Brazil. Monticino. He was not going to miss from there, was he? Hat trick on the night. Six goals in the tournament and one happy coach. Uh, he's playing really well tonight in front of potential employers here. Last number of years he's been off to Crystal in the Russian Premier League in beach soccer. May have upped his price with these goals. Different celebration each time. 
as Fanny's friend there. The story behind that is that last night, let's say for Mao, we're watching a crowd as Mao makes a great save. I'll tell you the story of that in a second. So the reason that side is in the crowd is because yesterday Fanny was made to get up and dance, was a star of the show for three or four minutes. So obviously Fanny's friend is looking to be star of the show tonight. So we go for the corner. Bettini with the header, just now. is now walking over to Gilberto, who's complaining. The idea is that they don't go in front of the boards. So every time they do, the third official places that area to push them back a little bit. And sometimes it causes a little bit more aggravation than necessary. The chef has also just been ushered back. Time you know, the free kick central for Russia. Piatini. No, we have the sound of the Brazilian fans ringing in his ear. Not too friendly. Will it affect him? Certainly won't. Russia are back. Well, is that the start of the mountain they need to climb, or is it just a consolation? Great concentration. Off back to his goalkeeper. Trotsky between the sticks for Russia in this period. We have two very good goalkeepers that are quite happy to switch up in every game. Chigo with the block. Second corner inside of a minute for Brazil. Oh, it's a header! It does creep in at the far post. One more step on the mountain to climb for Russia. Well, he thought for a second that Mauer made the save. Looking him with the corner. Just didn't get a strong enough hand to it. Zemskov finds the back of the net. Period is Russia leading the line. Russia two, Brazil five. Shishin. Continue. Mazzarino scans round, finds a yellow shirt. Well, eventually, swipes at the players. I mean, 
Here's a free kick to Russia. Tanya powered his way through there. Every time the ball seemed to get away from him, he managed to get a toe to it. With great strength. He's gone for the ball, obviously, hasn't he? You know, goalkeepers kind of not allowed to be touched. So one of three options really for Trotsky and goal. He can pass it to one of the Russian players by going down either side of the lines. You can see the players there, two on each side. Go for goal, by sheer power, off the ground, or try and bounce it in front of the goalkeeper. That's what he does. That's one, two, three bounces. It needs to be one bounce if you're going to get it past the goalkeeper, really, because each bounce takes speed out of the ball, makes it easy. And Nearly off for number four. Dominoff as well. Brilliantly done. Oh, maybe he should have gone for it himself. Marquinhos didn't open up on his left foot as he wanted it to. Check it in. Tim's cough. Doesn't get the goal, but gets the second prize. The corner and takes the knock on the way down. As you're being called on. Two minutes, three seconds on the clock. Let's go back on his feet, ready for the corner. Goes down. Have a cough with that. Back to the player, and have a cough. Actually, wears a gum shield while he's playing. But it was the push, but look at the way the car's standing there. Two feet side by side, it's going to be very easy for him to fall over. Take a risk if the referee doesn't stop the game at that point. It's a high pressure job being the coach of Brazil. And set his stall out, set the barrier pretty high, won the World Cup, and then his team have only lost on penalties in the last couple of years. So, the time when they lost out on three World Cups with Russia winning two and Portugal winning one. Certainly turn things around. Um, 
massive favourite for the World Cup next month in Paraguay. How's the scoreline? It's 5 2 massive favourites for tonight. They seem to have run out of a little bit of energy in Endeavour, Russia. Brazil, Brazil, I should say, managing the game, playing it at their tempo. Torino. Oh, well, it just crept across the goal to the far post. And one man was waiting for Kenya. Easiest of goals. Just has to almost nudge it into the back of the net. You can tell by the celebrations. Brazil feel they're halfway there. Almost like it's job done. Just takes the bounce off the sand. Bounces in the right direction. Russian player can get to it. It's the easiest of headers at the far post. Russia two, Brazil six. Hello, Romano, I should say. Mao does really well. Difficult not to interfere with the player going in the cycle of an, cycle of an overhead kick. So jump behind him, hopefully not touch him. Cal just waits. Eventually goes back to his goalkeeper. Mao. Torino puts in that out. Coutinho demands the penalty. That's an obstruction, so it goes to the halfway line. Piatini looks like he's unhappy with the decision as he's taking a face full of sand. So the hoot has sounded for the end of the period. Referee's a point to know that the free kick must be taken. Looks like Likachev is being sent off. Lucas Zatrowski and now Maradov are not changing their minds. He's questioning the sanity of the officials, I think. Polish bank manager, Mamadov, who's a referee in the Azerbaijan first division, both in agreement. And he's making his way off now, like a chef. In the world's slowest walk. Eventually, climbs up to the stand. No coach for Russia. So this will be the last kick the Hoots has sounded. Cow is going to go for power. Cow, good save. So that is the end of the period finally. The drama was all saved for the last few seconds. They couldn't confer the free kick from Lukau, Brazil. That man, Mikhail Likachov, the Russian coach, has been sent off. Gilberto has not. His team are in a very comfortable position as we head towards the final period. There's Russia 2, Brazil 6.
the Rude Sandstorm is playing in the background. It'll take a storm for Russia to win this game right now. On two referees there. Luka Sotrowski. And Hachim Nassau. Just sorting out the toss of the coin for the two teams. Of course, beach soccer being a game of three thirds. We need to toss the coin one more time before the final third to decide who will kick off. Torino, a goal scorer tonight. Rodrigo speaking to him, also a goal scorer. Russia now. Got to find a way back. Four goals behind. He did have a spell where he could score two without reply from Brazil. But Brazil are a scoring machine. 36 goals in this tournament so far. We still have 12 minutes to play. Russia. 23. It's the difference between what looks like first and second place at the moment, gold and silver. Dennis Koff, shot goes wide. Stats from first two periods. Brazil, 21 shots, 12 on target. Russia, 20 shots, only six on target. Accuracy is the difference, obviously. Prove a point, a wayward pass from Russia. Put it back to his goalkeeper. Mao seems to be playing all the minutes here in this game, unless there's a switch with Rafa Padilla. It tends to be that keepers play a period each, rather than swapping halfway through periods. He's the header, but he's to Russia. Semskov loses out, so it is Brazil's ball. Throw out from Mao. Tini though runs into a brick wall in the shape of Makarov. Eventually secures a free kick. Well, he's been shouting the entire game. He should be on the coaching staff. Tally for the tournament so far. Wow. Was that a shot? Was that a glimpse? Crash. Crash to Kennekov to use his full name. Obviously, easier to say crash. Thankfully, that's what he's got on his shirt. Probably a teeny. More difficult to say. Slightly more expensive to print his shirt as well. Here we go. It's rather unusual this tournament. You see the ball come back on there. The ball boys here have all got beards because they're all fellas, they're actually men. Ball men instead of ball boys or ball girls. Which is unusual, most tournaments it's to give the chance to, to be on the touchline. Oh, here he cut off. Doesn't mean that the players are more willing to shout at adults when they want the ball than kids. Antonio. Cow. Decent effort. Wow, there's not a gap opening up there really for the shot. He needs more of a touch to 
whose left or right. Gino. Barzanov does really well. Gets himself a free kick in the end. Bukinia. Trying to just nudge it out of his grasp. Here's a free kick. Knows the way of Russia. Just a bounce off the sand that made it difficult for the goalkeeper. Save. Look good for the cameras. Look at that. Make sure as well when he pushed it away. Go up and over. So you wonder with these two teams now. How will he view this tournament, either winning or losing? Are they really considering just a warm-up for the World Cup next month? Or is it really important for them to win? It's a brand new tournament, the Enoch World Beach Games. Features many, many sports, athletes from 97 countries. Check it in, twists and turns. Go backwards in the end. Sports as diverse as skateboarding, obviously not on the beach next to the beach. Bouldering, which is you've seen those indoor climbing walls, but it's going up those as fast as you possibly can. Gino thinks twice about going for the shot. Russia going to go for the wholesale four-man change. So freshen things up. Put some energy into this game. Sydney fans are looking very happy. That far stand in the camera position here. Whistle wide. Just had the curl on it the wrong way. Into out rather than out to in. Needs to be the outside of the foot from there. Looks well, like it's got a touch to goalkeeper pass enough, but not given. Clock keeps ticking towards the inevitable. Brazil may have a goal or two left in them. That's enough. Not bad effort. Zorov, in front of the goalkeeper. As he was over the bar, it wasn't a disadvantage. But Junio can't get his toe to the ball. Bounces harmlessly out for Russia. That's enough. They're playing three and one, which is a Brazilian style. Over them two and two, Russia. Now they go two and two. They'll we'll go three and one, to be honest with you, at this stage. Covitini. Crash. Covitini. Oh, Mao gets across so well. He was brave, the Brazilian goalkeeper. Covitini apologizes. to save that was a lot better when you see it as a replay hooks his hand behind and scoops the ball out of the sand and keeps all of it which is temporary coach there is Russia's full-time coach 
he sat just behind us, so that's me waving to you there. He sat behind me. Quite weird seeing yourself on television when you're commentating. The one a tie, no. Mikhail is in the stands, not a lot he can do. You can enjoy the pictures here, I suppose. He's looking over my shoulder. Now with the kick. Goes short. Torino. Catarino. Philippe. Fiatini. Gets the touch. Just look a little bit tired, the Russian players. Brazil controlling this game, just managing the pace of it. Oh, well, again. Now he's having his best game. He saved it for the final. Blenko with the slightest of headers. You see this in replay. I'm not sure it was the post or now. Bit of both. Occupational hazards get a face full of sand as a goalkeeper in beach soccer. And some teams use it as a tactic to break up games to say they've got sand in their eyes and make the physio come on and slow things down. I don't think either team will see any point in that at the moment. No advantage to be gained. They need it to be flowing the match. Brazil, for a simple reason, they'll fancy themselves with a few more goals. And Russia need to desperately try and claw their way back here. Wow. Now we've got blonde hair because of all the sand. There you go. That's your own Nassau. Is that as a foul? Once you're in the process of going for the overhead kick, if you are obstructed, nudged, whatever, then you get a free kick. You've got to be in the process of cycling your feet over. So if you just knocked it up in the air, that wouldn't count. Face says it all, doesn't it? That's for Brazil to make it seven. Lucky seven for them, very unlucky for Russia. Philippe. Oh, beautifully done. He's the boss. That's it. Halas, as they say in Arabic. That means finish. Finito. Whichever way you want to look at it. Just opens his foot out. And the goalkeeper. You see, he made a slight error by stepping to his right before the ball was struck. He also took a bobble on the way through. That's enough. Left sitting on the ground. Brazil left it. Left to finish it. Now. Rodrigo. Now. Now the foul is given. Yeah, they shouted champion, champion in Portuguese. We know why that's happening. I'm with a photographer doing anything to get a shot. So, this photography is there. Uh, Really good. Some real bad kick, spectacular things you'll see in a game. Captures perfectly. That's enough. 
I'm sure you're very photography on all the socials. Crash. Between you. And he's got seven in this tournament. And he tonight will not match the Brazilians. Romano. Pavlenko. To his goalkeeper. Turns one way, then loses out, but the shot from Crash. It's a divot before he goes through to the goalkeeper, taking the pace out of here, Lukao. That's like Padilla. He'll make his way onto the sand, just to give him a taste. And the sand will eventually happen to Brazil. Hopefully something he'll get used to in the future, very good goalkeeper. That's the bar, Braga. Portugal. Brazil have picked him up as a lot of the Portuguese players are actually Brazilian by birth. Which means Brazil have missed out on a few very good players. Gilberto won't mind too much because his side is pretty much all conquering at the moment. Well, there's a few things that Russia have done to Brazil in the past that they want revenge for. Way by Catarino. Looking about the World Cup in extra time in 2015. Beating them in the semi final of the Continental Cup in Dubai last year by the slimmest of margins on penalties. This will more than make up for it. Catarino does not attempt to go towards goal, goes back. Catarino has the flick. That's what we expect from Brazilian players. Now, Mancinio, I don't think they'll be trying anything at the moment. They don't have that confidence. I know it won't count if they lose out the ball, it won't matter too much. Mancinio, shack it in. Not to uh, just flick the ball out. Boquinha. Oh, well, just gets better and better. Lukao, it looked like an impossible angle. It looks almost impossible to beat the keeper from that angle at the near post. Mikhail Likachev, the Russian coach's face, says it all. Well, they'll run out of celebration soon. You watch this drift across. Lukao just finds the tightest of gaps between the posts and Bazanov's left hand. I thought we'd be happy with that. He won't be happy conceding eight. Then ecstatic scoring eight. Party time before you even finish the game. Russia two, Brazil eight. Oh, well, there is the cherry on top. Unbelievable. How did he score from the angle before, and how did he score from that distance? It just what looked like a lazy swing. Brilliantly done. That's enough, just a spectator like we are in the stand behind the goal. Wow. What a finish. 50 seconds left. All the Brazilian fans are on their feet on the far side. It's Russia 2, Brazil 9. Will we get double figures? I don't think he's given handball. He has. Well, Rodrigo Suto has hardly been on. I think he's going to 
you get a red card. Well, that's the happiest player I've ever seen to get a red card. And he was a replacement for Bruno Xavier, who is normally the man who fills his position in the squad. He's only made his debut for Brazil, age 30. This is the shortest appearance in the history of beach soccer. I like the way he went down holding his face, nobody was fooled there. So a penalty for Russia. All the Brazil fans desperate for Russia not to score here. But this will prove to be just a consolation. Makarov will take it. Scored four so far in this tournament. Time to make it number five. It is. Well, so deathly silence greets that goal. Consolation celebration more than a celebration celebration. Padilla went one way than the other. Like a table football goalkeeper. Didn't make any difference. Well, just smashed through the sense of the ball, probably taking out a bit of his frustration. Uh, the fact they've conceded nine and not really put up a fight here against the team they've beaten in the last 12 months. It's Russia three, Brazil nine. Padilla. Mikhail. Rodrigo Suter has been told to leave the stadium. Rafinha would love to have scored then. Oh, silly, silly, silly. Yellow cards being issued left, right, and centre here. Players need to be careful because they don't want to be sent off in a final, do you? And the fans bouncing up and down. Well, rather surprisingly, leading the cheers there at the front with someone in a Boca Juniors shirt. Those Boca Juniors from Argentina, deadly rivals of Brazil. So there's a story behind why. That's not far away. Off with a sweet strike. Here we go, the countdown is on. Shakirin, is there another goal in Russia yet? Or maybe Brazil? Ocinio well, charges forward. That is it. The Hooter sounds. And the team in gold win gold. It's exactly what you'd expect in beach soccer. It's like it was pre written. When Brazil play, Brazil win, and Brazil are champions, the inaugural champions here at the Enoch World Beach Games, and they've done it in emphatic fashion. Russia three, Brazil nine. What a way to warm up for the World Cup. Is there anybody that can touch this side? Just one defeat on penalties. In the last two years, being ranked world's number one since October 2017. They won the World Cup last time out in the Bahamas. First time in four attempts. They were dipping in form, and dipping down the rankings, Brazil. But then Gilberto, the coach, came along. He restored confidence. He restored belief. And now they just cannot stop winning. A few consolation words there for Mikhail Likachev and Gilberto. Very nice man, very kind hearted. Very popular amongst the players and staff. Very young Brazilian in his approach, actually. Very calm, doesn't scream and shout. Let me look at the stats.